I thank you, Lord God, for your spirit that's in abundance in this place. I pray, Father, that you would change our minds, that you would change our hearts, that you would cause us to be in a place, a place, Lord God, to where you can use us, to where you can change us, that you can mold us, Lord, that you could, you could help us. There are times in life, Lord, that we don't realize how much we need your help. Lord, we need your help now more than we've ever needed your help before. We ask you now, Jesus, that you would manifest glory by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we shall not be influenced by what man say unless what they say is from you. I pray in Jesus' name that you would, you would move us out of the realm of being puppeted by humanity and the systems that exist within our world, that we move into the place to where we are controlled and guided by your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, um, God's going to speak to you. If he's not already speaking to you, he's going to speak to you today. Now, b before we begin to just, just dive off up into this, guys, in, in all fairness, I want you to hear the reality of what's going to be said at this moment. There are a lot of things that are in our world that may not be accurate for as the understanding that we've all grown into for as history is concerned, all right? There are a lot of things that may not be as accurate as we think that they are, and I'm not speaking in reference to the Word of God. I'm speaking in the reference of life and history as we know it, all right? The Word of God is the only thing that we know of and we believe that that has the ability to be error free. All right. God said in his word that his word was spirit breathed, that his word is inerrant, meaning that God's word is perfect. All right. Just because you and I don't understand, it doesn't take away from the perfection of God's word. You know, sometimes we write off certain things in the scripture for lack of understanding. But we can't write off God's word because we don't understand. If we are true believers, we press into God for greater understanding. We don't run away from God because of lack of understanding. We run into God because we want to understand. And what we don't understand, we, 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 we rely on the reality that we trust God. Right? When, when there is a lack of understanding, trust is where we go in God's track record and ability of being a flawless God. God is infallible, meaning that there is no error in God. Everything that God is and everything that God will be, for as we are concerned, will always be perfect. Always. He is the author and the finisher, not only of our faith, but of all things. The life that you and I enjoy the luxury of on this side was authenticated and given and breathed by God himself. Not man, God. Right? There's a lot of uh, information that we are continually discovering on a daily basis that man has come up with different ideas and different thought patterns that have been injected into society that's not really accurate. You know, from the beginning, Satan has always been a deceiver. Always from the beginning. God said through the mouth of Je God the Father said through the mouth of Jesus Christ is that Satan has been a liar from the beginning. He's a murderer from the beginning. So the spirit of deception originated through Lucifer. It originated through Lucifer. So what has happened in the world we live in is that Lucifer's ideology has been injected into society. So the society and the world that we live in is wrapped up in a bunch of lies. I'm saying something to you today. I hope in Jesus' name it don't go over your head. All right? There is a rude awakening that is developing right now amongst us. And that rude awakening is being brought to the surface because the word of God says in the book of Luke there's not anything that's hidden there's not anything that's done in secret 
that shall not be made manifest and brought to the light. Because the light has the ability to expose what's dark. The light has the ability to expose what's dark. The word of God says in Isaiah 60, Isaiah had a prophetic vision. And he said, I look and I saw gross darkness covering the earth. Gross darkness represent a lot of bad issues. He said, but at the same time I saw a great light emerging in the midst of the darkness. Because when the light is manifest, that which is dark has to scatter. When Jesus Christ was, 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 was born into the earth, the Bible says that that group of people sit in great darkness. That's what it says in Luke. But when Christ was manifest, the darkness that was there was exposed because of the light. And so what we need right now more than anything we've ever thought that we needed, we need the light of the King of glory to shine among God's people. That's what we need right now. Many of us don't know what we need. We need the light and the revelation of Jesus Christ to be revealed to God's people so that we can see in a dark world. Amen. Are you following me? Are you following me? All right. Now, I want to do something that, 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 that I've, I've, I've done before, uh, but maybe a different way. Can, I, can one of you guys uh, stand back? Well, you're by the uh, light switch. Can you put your hand on that light switch back there to the right of you? No, it's right behind you, to the right. Ray, uh, can, Tanisha, can you stand right here at this light switch? And when I say turn it, you guys turn them off at the same time. All right, ready? Turn them off. It's complete darkness in here. It's complete darkness. So our vision has been skewed. Yeah, there, there, there's light coming from the screen here, but it's, it, it doesn't give us as much light that we need so that we can see clearly. Right? You see me, I am a figure, but I'm, 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 I'm somewhat uh, uh, skewed to you. All right, can you cut your set of lights on? All right, now the image of who I am is a little clearer. And now I'm standing here, but you're there, and I can see you. There's a silhouette with you, but I can't see as clear as I need to see because darkness is still ruling there. All right? Can you cut those lights on? Now we have an abundance of light, and anything that's dark has been overshadowed by the light. So what we need right now in the earth is that we need the light of Jesus Christ to manifest in our world to change our vision. Your vision will not be changed outside of light. It will be changed, but not for the glory of God. Because we are being changed whether you want to be changed or not. You're being affected. We're being affected whether we want to be affected or not. See, the, the deal about change is that change is inevitable. Meaning that change is unavoidable. We change without even knowing we're changing because we are creatures of change. We were put and born in a world as a brand new individual. We started out in seed form, or we started out in spirit form that manifested in seed form, and we went from seed form into uh, uh, this embryo, and we developed in what we call uh, uh, a baby, and the baby was given birth, but from the time that the seed of life was placed into the wound of a woman, that seed began to grow. And ever since you that are here today started growing, you hadn't stopped. But we're not growing younger, we're growing older physically. Right? So everything we see is progressive. Everything we see is progressive. Just like your faith is progressive. Many of us, we're not growing in our faith. It's because we've come to a place to where our feeding source is not as abundant as it should be concerning the things of the Lord. So what you eat has the ability to affect the way you and I function. What you and I eat spiritually has the ability to affect the way that you and I function. Right? If you want to function for God, if you want to walk in the spirit, you have to eat God's food. Many of us, we're sitting down and we're eating at the wrong table. 
And so as long as you keep eating at the world's table, you'll act like the world, you'll look like the world, and you'll function like the world. Many of us in the body of Christ, we are worldly. It's because our diet is worldly. Well, let me say that again. We are worldly. We are secularized. It's because our spiritual diet is a secular diet. We breathe the world ideology. We speak the world's language. We function like the world functions. So when people that are of the world get invited to your local congregation and they see your congregation looking like the world, they're not impacted a change. It's because they didn't come into a different setting. And when they see you and I, we don't impact them the way they should be impacted. It's because they still, they still see the glimmer of hopelessness of the world because the image of the world is hopelessness. We ought to be the image of hope. When the world look at us, we are the hope that Christ lives on the inside of us by his spirit. So when the world see us, the world should see Jesus. When the world hear us, the world should hear Jesus. I was very disturbed last night. My wife and I, we were there just kind of casually hanging out. And, and um, a video popped up on Facebook of a a pastor friend of mine that's more like a brother, and, and his son was in some club playing some, some demonic heavy metal stuff, and, and the demonic passion I saw on him disturbed me so bad. Because I know this pastor, and I know his wife, and I know who they are, and I know what they stand for. And I could feel the bleeding of their heart that their only son was trapped in a demonic cycle on Facebook expressing the ways of the enemy through his music. We got to break away from everything that's unlike God. We got to break away from their music. Come on, we're leading the revolt here today. We got to break away from their music. We got to break away from their TV programs. We got to break away from everything that looks like the devil and begin to establish the kingdom of God. We are the originators. We are the trendsetters. God has called us to stand up and take ground and stand ground. And everybody don't like this message. But either we're going to walk with God, be a God, or you're going to keep being used by the devil. And let me say this right here. I'm speaking to you out of a life of victory. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm standing in the place of victory. Been there, done that, wore the t-shirt, burn it up, and standing in victory. I'm not walking around depressed. I'm not walking around sad and sagging. I'm not walking around broken. I'm walking around whole and well in Jesus' name. My marriage is blessed. My children are blessed. Now, this is not a pride statement. I'm just telling you where I'm at. I'm not speaking to you out of a place of skepticism. I'm speaking to you out of a place of fact. I am the living, breathing expression of who Jesus is. Guys, you better hear what I'm saying here. I, and I have the right to say that. And you have the right to say that too. Christ lives in me. The hope of glory is in me. Everything we need is in you. It's available in you right now. Not next week, but right now. The intensity of God's word is prevalent right now, but it has to come forth in his people. We spend too much time trying to be relevant, and our relevance, according to the world standards, is really in irrelevant to the current kingdom. You know? God is not concerned about your relevance. He's not concerned about my relevance. Because my relevance, according to the world standard, is irrelevant to the kingdom of God. God wants you and I to do it his way. Not your way. His way. You know, some of the finest minds that we've known to humanity have spoken with so much authority and so much power that when we send our children to school, even from preschool, their thinking, their ideology, and their ways are shaping our world's mind that, are, that is godless. When you sit in a classroom 
in a, in a philosophy class or you sit in a classroom of, of American history or you sit in a classroom and, and you begin to learn the foundational principles of, of mathematics and, and you begin to learn according to the world system, it's shaping your mind. It's shaping your mind, not from a morality standpoint. Well, actually, now it's infiltrated us to try to affect our morality. Because now we're not just talking X's and O's. We're talking about gender issues that, that shape society. And people are confused with their gender, and that type of ideology is being stuffed down the throat of humanity. And we don't have government that's strong enough to stand on the principles of the kingdom and call right, right, and wrong, wrong. And so how can we expect a society to walk sound morally when the society that we live in, the, 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 the agenda is being propagated from the highest court of the land to, to, to change our thinking and impose its ways upon us and it tax us spiritually because we feel under pressure and out of place because they seem like it's more of them than it is of us. We don't feel comfortable in the world and the nation we live in any longer. It's because what we see that has developed, it's not just developing, that there have been plans that have been put in place before you and I was ever born to change this issue. Why am I preaching this? This is what the Spirit of God has put in my heart today. It's what God has put in my heart today. I don't want another church service. I don't want another meeting. Because guess what? You need prayer, and I need prayer. You need breakthrough, and I need breakthrough. You need change, and I need change. Your children struggling, trying to stay off of marijuana and all kind of stuff right now. And guess what? They want to make it a little bit easier for them so they can smoke, smoke, puff, puff, and give. The devil is a light. Come on, somebody. We just going to tell the truth. And I'm not, I'm not going to even get into my thoughts of, of miracle man or marijuana and people try to establish their thinking about that it's a seed from the earth or whatever. You can, you can, you can OD on whatever you want to OD on, but you got to be principled. You can OD on some eucalyptus. You can kill yourself taking too much peppermint. Come on, don't, don't play games with me up in this place today. We got to know what's right and what's wrong. You can take oxycodone and, and hallucinate just like you would on marijuana. That's a different between medical use and the abuse of some recreational individual that's going to get high off cannabis sativa and get into it. Come on, I know what I'm talking about up in here. You don't have some dumb preacher with a microphone. You got a brother that understands things in life, and I don't understand everything, but there are things that I do understand. It's about where we are spiritually. Because we can take marijuana away and you can go load up on some cough syrup out of the grocery store and get just as loaded on cough syrup as you do marijuana. Come on, I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen up in here. Where do you think they came from sipping on syrup and swinging and banging? Jesus, help me up in here. Help me up in here. We preaching the word of God up in here. See, 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 the devil hated that God saved me. He hated that God pulled me out of the hands of the evil one and filled me with his spirit so that we can liberate a people. God want to set you free. He want to set you free. He want to set you free. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 4, because I know some of us that's religious, we waiting on a scripture. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'll be waiting on one too. But everything that I said thus far better be in context with the scripture you're waiting on. Come on, somebody. It better be in harmony with the scripture that you're waiting on. Everything I said is in line with the kingdom mindset. It's not out of line, it's in line, and it's inbound, it's not out of bound. Every last one of us have struggles. We're all walking through different areas of life trying to make it. Somebody, if you would be, 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 be honest with yourself and get out of denial, you'll understand that you may be struggling more than what you let people know. But it's not about letting people know. It's about getting before the God who knows everything so he can break you out of your struggle. Matthew 24, 4, 
the Lord gave me here. And it says, And Jesus answered, and he said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Let me say that again. Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, I know everybody, you know, when we start talking about the devil and, and all this kind of crazy stuff that some folk don't want to hear that type of language. And that's cool with me. That's cool with me. I'm not going to force anything on anybody. But I got to do what I got to do to live my life. Amen. Amen. So, so, so this is the deal. Jesus said, he said, take heed. I mean, pay attention. Become observant. Get out, get out of your spiritual sleep. Pay attention. Look at the details. Make sure that the devil don't deceive you. That's not what he said, even though that is what he said. That's not what he said, but that is what he said. He said, don't let no man mislead you. All right? So if the devil want to mislead people, not just God people, if the devil want to mislead people, who is he going to use? Come on, talk to me. He going to use people. So, so you spiritual people, you spiritual people understand that the devil use people. And everybody he used is not standing in the pulpit. People say, I ain't going to that church because they, you know, yeah, stay away. You, when you realize it ain't right, stay away. But you got some folk, you riding in your car, you need to stay away. Come on. You got some people, you riding around in your car that you need to stay away from too. Come on, it ain't just the preacher. You think the devil is dumb? You got some people that hitching rides with you that, that guess what? It's like there was a story about uh, somebody picked up a snake and the snake was, was, was cold, and, and, but it wasn't dead. And they put it in the car and, and, and turned the heaters on the snake but, because that was one of those people that was in touch with nature, you know, and they were, you know, real foolish. And anyway, they put that snake inside the vehicle. And once the snake warmed up, it bit the driver because a cold snake, hot snake is still a snake. Just because you pat the snake on the head, you don't change the nature. So we got some people that we hanging out with that are being used as tools in this demonic system to lead God's people away from God. Did you hear that? There are some people that are in your world and I'm not talking about in the world as far as the global world is concerned or even the world as far as America. I'm talking about in your little sphere of influence. There's some people that the enemy has camped out around you, around me, to lead me into a place away from God. So we got, we got to just get that out of the way, right? It can be your mama. <laughs> it can be your daddy. It can be your sister. And it can be your brother. It can be it can be it can be it can be your husband. Oh Jesus. It can be your wife. It could be your children. Because God never said who it wouldn't be. The enemy will use anybody and anything to lead us away from God. Paul told Timothy, he said, Hey, it wasn't Adam that seen first, it was the woman. Now, we're not going to put the weight on the women because Adam messed up too, but, but in context of Scripture, he said that it was the woman first that disobeyed God, and the man followed the woman, and she led him into rebellion against God. But just as it was the woman first, it was the man fault, it's because the woman wasn't set in authority, the man was. Come on, I got you off the hook, women. I got you off the hook. I got, I got you off the hook. See that? I wasn't gonna leave you. I wasn't gonna leave you hanging. I wasn't gonna leave you hanging, because God is a God of balance. He's a God of balance. So even though Eve was doing her thing, Adam didn't do his job. 
Because if Adam was on his job, he could have prevented the situation of Eve doing what she did. And he still could have stood up and been the man of God. Hallelujah. He still could have stood up and been the man of God. So, so let me get on down the King's Highway here. I don't want to keep you here all day. You know, but it wouldn't matter if you stayed here all day with me. But I just want to be kosher and keep it in the context of not keeping you all day. So let's get that in the open. I don't mind by spending the rest of the day with you. I, I don't mind. I really don't mind. I know we all got other things on the schedule. But, but I'm, I'm going to give you what I can right quick. So that we can move on. I just want to just let you know my heart right quick. So, you know, don't think I'm feeling sympathetic, you know, because you got to get out of here. Hallelujah. But, but I'm not going to be inconsiderate either. Hallelujah. Don't you love you hanging out with somebody who's going to tell you the truth? Hallelujah. I don't have no hidden agendas, man. Come on. The only agenda I got is God be glorified. Amen. Only, that's the only agenda I got is for God to be glorified. See, see problems in the church is that some of us got plans in our back pocket with the wrong type of all right he said don't let men deceive you the word deceive in the Greek mean properly to go astray to go astray so in order for someone to go astray that means that you must have been on the right street you can't go astray if you ain't been right. The only way you can go astray is to move away from where you once were. It also means to, to get off course. It means to deviate from the correct plan deviate from the correct plan meaning that you come up with with some other type plan that distract you and I to pull us away from the first agenda that God gave you somebody say I got to go back to what God told me from the beginning uh, you got to believe this thing. You, you got to believe this thing. Right now, uh, uh, Microsoft software uh, uh, just popped up for an update on here, and it has two choices here. It has a decline button and an accept button. But I accept this. It's going to shut my computer down, and I will be deviated from the course. So we're going to click decline so I can keep on course. Because while you're on the journey in motion, things will come up in the midst of the journey to cause you to rethink where you are, to distract you and pull you off course. Come on, somebody. See, 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 we, we need to go back and we need to read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and read it all the way to the point to where when Lot started to walk out of the city. Go read it all. Because when that brother decided to walk out of the city, that's when his wife decided to look back at the city. When God had spoke through the angels, don't look back. See, the deal is she was too connected with what was behind her, and it caused her attention to change what... We got people. In the body of Christ, we 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 too connected with what's behind you in an unrighteous way, and we can't move forward because we are allowing what God say to let go to have precedence over our life now, so we can't move forward. I want you to say, I'm moving forward. Don't say it because I shotgun you, say it because you believe it. You like the shotgun wedding, you know. All right, so 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 it means to to, to, to deviate from the correct path the correct course, uh, to become a roamer, a roamer, a roamer into error, wandering li li like, like a nomad because you're being misled. You're being misled. It's like dropping the, the, the demonic breadcrumbs, you know, and, 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 and your, your desires are wrong. And so the enemy just dropped crumbs. He dropped crumbs, and all of a sudden you just, you know, keep dropping the crumbs, and you just, just go off course. But you need to decide at this junction of your life that you're not going to be brought off course. That you're going to keep your face fixed before God. Amen. All right. So for a title, uh, it's keeping our eyes on Jesus doing conflict. Keeping our eyes on Jesus during conflict or doing great conflict. Now, Jesus said, let no man deceive you. We got, we, we got an understanding that the devil will use people to deceive you. He'll use people to mislead us. Just like the devil will use people to mislead us, God will use people to put us on the right track. And guess what? I am an advocate for the right track. You know, you'll see, you'll see me. I'll be the poster boy, and I'll be standing there. Nice, pretty big poster, but, you know, I'll be, sta I'll be standing there, 
and you'll see me and you'll see over my head advocate for the right choice. Right there, you see it? Advocate for the right choice. I'll be Jesus' poster boy. You can too. An advocate for the right way. Hallelujah. That should have been a commercial. Maybe in the next life. First Timothy 4.1. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. Like, did you know that was in the Bible? In order for us to turn away from the faith, I had to have been a part of the faith. I can't turn away from something. You can't turn away from something that you've never been committed to. So the Spirit of God say that in the latter times there will be people that will turn away from the faith. All right? They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. This is the New Living Translation. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that originate from the devil. One interpretation said that, that they will be subject or seduced by men that are teaching on the demonic powers. Are you hearing that? So, so it does. I don't have to look like a demon to be under the influence of a devil. If I'm going to deceive God's people, I got to be clothed in church clothes. I sound like Lecrae then. I got to have church clothes on. Meaning that I got to look like church people. I got to kind of act like church people. Because I can't get the people if I don't look like the people. So Paul told the church at Corinth, he said that even the messengers of Satan will portray themselves as an angel of light to deceive God's people. Meaning that he will present himself as a messenger of righteousness. But the motive is to deceive God's people. You need to make it up in your mind today that you will not be deceived. And if you have been deceived, we pray in Jesus' name that God will unstop your spiritual ears and that God will move whatever obscurity in your vision so that you can see clearly and you can hear clearly. Uh, you ought to say amen, but see, people that's blind ain't going to say amen. You'll say amen because you got a witness in your spirit that you want to walk in freedom and you want to be free because you know God is with you. And if God is with you, God, break off every callous bone in my body and bring me into a place of spiritual sensitivity. Everybody in the world is looking for something to connect to. There are more psychic wellness centers that are popping up over this nation than anywhere in the world world. There are massage centers. There are Zen stations that people are going to so that they can connect to something in the realm of the spirit. There are Buddhists right now that are sitting in still posture right now because they want to connect with something beyond here. There are Muslims all over the world that are faced toward Mecca right now with their hands in their face with the hope that they will connect to a God that's greater than them. There are individuals throughout the world that are slinging bones and breaking chicken necks and doing whatever they can trying to connect with a higher power. But you don't have to do all of that. Jesus died for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. Father God sent his son into the earth to reconnect 
humanity back with Father God and all you got to do is call on his name. Get in his presence and be ye connected. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come up over you. Change your mind. Change your vision. Change your action. Change everything about you because God is a God of change. Somebody say God is a God of change. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just felt like I needed to get that out of my spirit right there because we got to put it in the atmosphere that God is a God of change. God is a God of the supernatural. We don't need a spirit medium. We don't need a Ouija board. We don't need cups to do whatever you consider us to do. We can connect to God because of the blood. Somebody say, because of the blood, I have the ability to connect to our holy God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name. You're great in all of your ways. We exalt your name that you are El Elyon. You are the most high God. There is none that can compare to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now let me just come on back together here. Just Let me just come on back this way for a minute. Hallelujah. So, so, so he says, he said, turn away. They're going to turn away from the faith, but the result of them turning away is because of spirits that are being in men and they're teaching the, the, uh, uh, doctrines of devils. I started this off talking about information that's been sowed into our life, that's been poured into our mind ever since we were born. So there have been demonic seeds from the inception of your life and my life that the enemy has tried to seed in you. He's tried to see it in me. And if you grew up in like a uh, church, come on, what better place? If you a good devil, and ain't no such thing as a good devil, his strategy is he considered him to be good because he bad, bad, bad. I sound like a billy goat. Bad, bad, bad. But if he, if he's, if he, if he is a, a strategic devil, all right, and he want to mess God's people up, the first place he'll show up is at your child's baptism. The second place he'll show up is in the Sunday school class so that he can try to get some ill, uh, messed up doctrine in your head to cripple your future. The next place he'll show up is in your youth group because he know if he can mess you up in your youth group and give you some secular youth pastor that's been sold out to the world and sold out to what he think God is and, and he gives you both cups to drink and now you got confusion on the inside of you because you got two different ideologies and two different mindsets that are worried on the inside of you. We got too many secular you pastors. We got too many secular pastors and we selling two different stories and we got to change today in Jesus name. If you want to be bout it, bout it, be bout it, bout it for Jesus. I was listening to the, the truth, the truth, uh, a few days ago, and I listened to uh, a lot of his music, but he said that, he said, people, the kids ain't in interested in church anymore. They're, they're interested in uh, P. Diddy and, and Farnsworth. They don't want to hear about God's worth. I was like, man, this dude is amazing. He said, he said, they worry about girls with their pretty toes, and, and come, Jesus, help me. See, 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 the deal is, is you got a bunch of people that they mind been split, and God want to bring your mind together and fill you and I with the kingdom agenda. Quit living like the world and lusting after the world. Let's go after God hard. There are some people that's filled with the Holy Ghost that can wrap you into a spiritual coma. There are some people that can stand up and sing and the Holy Ghost fall on you and you fall out under the anointing. But there are some people that stand up and wear Jesus' name and they have been anointed by the devil. So when they sing, they bring you under their spell. And now you're under a demonic spell of spiritual hypnosis. And the enemy begin to take you. And you begin to speak like them. And walk like them. And function like them. And smell like Lil Wayne. And, and look like Beyonce with a, a table stand and a night dance. And, and uh, it's just too much. It's just too much. 
because we're going through a minefield of, of the Kardashians and we're going through a minefield of, uh, of whoever group this is and, and we're trying to find our way because we don't have enough people like Benjamin Watson to stand up and speak on the behalf of God and say the world problem is a heart problem because we got a lot to say but we ain't saying nothing. And a lot of people that's saying they're supposed to be church people. And they say it don't take all that. Well, I, I'm, I'm ex-thug. You know, I'm ex-educated thug. I was from a good family, but I got thug life spatted on my chest because they sold me a lie. But I was one of the slaves that got free. Not slave to a race, but slave to systems. And now we causing the system spiritual hemorrhages. Because we've been free and we are free. And the more we think about our freedom, we have to speak out and tell the enemy that you got to back up and let our people go in Jesus' name. I got a word like Moses, but a Joshua mandate. See, see, Moses said, let my people go. Joshua said, now you're free. I got the sword. If you don't act right, we're going to off you. I got a Moses mandate. A Moses, a mosaic message with a Joshua anointing. Boy, that's a bad boy right there. In Jesus, you got it too. You got it too. Joshua was about conquest. Joshua was about spiritual jihad. Not concerning Islam, but concerning the kingdom of God. We're going to take over in Jesus' name. You know, no, 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 Jesus. You better, you better, you better get Jesus. Somebody say, I got to get Jesus. I got to get Jesus, because if I don't get Jesus, I can't understand this. I got to get Jesus, and I need the Holy Spirit to, to just baptize me afresh. Somebody say, just baptize me afresh. Baptize me afresh. Baptize me afresh. Move everything, God, I mean, that is unlike you, God. Move it out. Move it out, God. Move it out. Move it out, God. Get it out of me, God. Get, get Lil Wayne and Baby and them. Get it out of me, God. Get, get Tupac out of me. You got too much stuff playing in you. That's not of God. Get it out of you. I don't know what they listen to today. You got to get Drake out of you. You got to get Rihanna out of you. You got to get this stuff out of you for the kingdom of God to have complete rule in you. We shaking it and doing all this stuff and it's perilous times right now. And we got to get free in Jesus' name. We still trapped with R. Kelly and we still got them flowing in our spirit. We still got their songs in us. And maybe you, that's not your generation, but God has given me a word to preach you free up in this place today. The Bible says, shun every appearance of evil. Dare we exalt people that's lifting up sin and glorifying the ways of the devil. Sexual sin, fornication and adultery and drunkenness. And we're exalting these people. Don't you know you're exalting the devil? When you lift up unrighteousness and you lift up the unrighteousness of people, you are working as an instrument of the enemy. Some of us on Facebook, you won't share somebody's scripture, but you'll share Lil Wayne. You'll, you'll share Lil BB. Who, give me some of them names out there. Somebody, you, some of y'all know. You, yeah, you won't share your pastor's scripture. You won't share with the anointing fall. Because you'll be, your friends will embarrass you. Because they know you might be living two lives. And we bold enough to put stuff out there for the world. And not for God. Man, what manner of man is this? God has hit me with the anointing of freedom. Set us free, Lord. Too many people playing church, man. Set us free. Set us free. Secular pastors, secular youth pastors, secular praise and worship team. You come in some of these places and, and they singing songs during the time of worship. You don't know whether it's R. Kelly or whoever. You don't know whether they're singing to Jesus or they woman. We singing to Jesus, bro. I sent out the I sent out the latest news blast from the kingdom to you. I'll be heaven's errand boy. It's the kingdom. Amen. It's the kingdom. So the Holy Spirit said people are going to turn away. You know why they're going to turn away? Because, the, because what we preach at night is distasteful to them. Ain't they appetite? You know, I have some days and I don't know why my wife bought these cinnamon rolls. Cin cinnamon rolls is like my favorite. 
So she comes in last night. I'm upstairs, and, and I smell like, and I know it's like, you know, something like that's not right. That's traveling up the stairs. It's just, I said, man, I thought she was cooking chicken and macaroni, and, but that's not that type smell. So when I got down, I had to, when I got downstairs, I had to face my greatest demons. It was a cinnamon roll, fresh out of the oven. I say, what has betwixt me? I reasoned within myself that I'll be going on a fast soon, so I can just go ahead and get it out of the way. But it broke my concentration of what I'm trying to do. And now my body is saying, Mo cinnamon rolls. So I went upstairs after I ate one. But the smell was still lingering, and now the taste was so good. I was really hoping that they were all gone when I went back, but I really wasn't hoping that. When I went back, it was three more left. And I said, I'll just get part of it. But before I put my hand on part of it, all of it was gone. I went back upstairs again. I said, okay, two. This goes over. I went back downstairs again. This time they were all gone. But it was a long cinnamon roll that my son Samuel had done something with that was still sitting on the table. I said, well, it looked like he didn't touch it too much. I said, I'll just eat the part that I, I'm sure that he didn't touch. And before long, it was all gone. <laughs> so what I'm saying here is that there are things in life that will rise up to derail you. And so now today, I'm struggling with the reality. What will I eat today? <laughs> because I have created an appetite of a sweet demon. That's tormenting me right now. And so when I pass the donut shop today, it's going to speak to me like it never spoke to me before. And it's going to say, you're going on a fast soon. Go get you just one donut. Or don't get one donut. Get a bag of donut holes because they're smaller. And they'll last you longer than the one. But that's a demon, too, because you got more calories in a smaller package. It's mindset. So y'all pray for me. All right. Back on track. Ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. So there are doctrines that are being propagated in the earth from birth that come into us and it start affecting us without our permission. We start functioning and demonstrating certain type of behaviors from birth that we didn't ask or give. We didn't ask it for it, and we didn't give it permission. It just happened. I always said I'll never smoke. I had an uncle. He smoked half a tamp of cigars. And when I was spending the night at that house, when he would smoke them cigars, it just looked attractive. He just was like cool in his chair. You know, I mean, he was like somebody that I looked up to, but he was real cool because when he would put that wooden tip in his mouth and like that cigar, like the most fascinating thing, it's like, man. So when he would, he wouldn't smoke all the half a tampas, I would steal like, you know, the, the part that was left because I wanted to try it out. You know, I want to try it out. But I didn't know that you needed more of the cigar because I was young then. I didn't know that you needed more tobacco because half a tampa have a, 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 a a wooden tip in about that long and so if he smoked it all the way down to the wood and you like it you about to smoke wood buddy <laughs> so so I developed a habit growing up 
you know, that it, it was a seed, but the seed was through the visual. My uncle was used as an instrument. He wasn't trying to do it, but the enemy had a plan to seed that in me. And when I would see them drink, their drinking and their behavior looked like they had so much fun. I couldn't wait till I got a chance to like drink one of their nasty drinks. Because it looked like they had so much fun. Like at the end of the night, everybody was, you know, the way that they were in. Like, man, we had so much fun. That's what they would say. And there I am. That story, that story has been sold to me. And so there I am, starting out as a young child. I started drinking early in my teens. Drinking without them even knowing it. Because they sold it to me. They sold the image. And now before long, when I got 16, 17, their image that they sold to me had became so believable that I was wrapped up in a web that I couldn't get loose from. But it all started with what was visualized before me. And I started living that way. But thank God for Jesus. And he set me free 16 years ago. He set me free. But what happened is that God started using other people to paint a different image to me. And their image was so believable, believable concerning Christ that I bought into it. And I started having experiences, maybe even beyond what they were experiencing, that caused me to dive in deeper. So that's the reason I'm talking to you today. That's kind of like just sitting there and, and we need to check your pulse and, and see if you're alive today. Is that when you have a progressive relationship with Jesus, people start recognizing your relationship because you all in. You all in. I mean, you all in. You're like, man, you all the way in. And God has changed you. And he's changed. 2 Timothy 3, in the Amplified, verse 1, it says, But understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress. It's, you know, CNN couldn't could have done, they couldn't have done this good. You know, Fox News couldn't have done it. This is like fresh off the press. Great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self. And utterly self-centered. They will be lovers of money. They will be aroused by an inordinate greediness. Greedy desires of wealth. Proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive. They will be blasphemers, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, profane. They will be without natural human affection. They will be callous, inhum callous and inhuman or inhumane. They will be relentless, admitting to no truce or appeasement. People are struggling with commitment today. They're struggling with commitment today. They will be slanders. They will be false accusers. They will be troublemakers. They will be intemperate. And loose in their morals and conduct. Jesus. They will be uncontrolled and fierce. Haters of good. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasure and vain amusement. More than and rather than lovers of God. Sound like the world we're living in right now, right? For although they hold a form of true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belittles the genuineness of their profession. The Bible says, somebody say, the Bible says, avoid all such people and turn away from them and turn away from them. From them. And the Amplified says, turn away from them. Avoid those type people because they are instruments of the enemy to cause you that are trying to walk right to deviate from the first plan. We got a couple of amens, but it's okay. It says in verse 6 For among them are those who worm their way into homes and captivate silly and weak natured. 
and spiritually dwarfed women loaded down with the burden of their sins and easily swayed and led away by various evil desires and seductive impulses. These weak women will listen to anybody who will teach them. They are forever inquiring and getting information, but are never able to arrive at a recognition and knowledge of the truth. You need to say, that ain't me. We need to say it again. That's not me. It's a, re it's a reality of the world we live in right now. Verse 8 said, now just as Janice and Jambres was hostile to and Moses and resisted Moses, so these men also are hostile to and oppose the truth. Who are they opposing? They are opposing the truth. They have depraved and distorted minds. What have they distorted? Minds. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. And are reprobate. A reprobate and counterfeit and to be rejected as far as the faith is concerned. But they will not give, they will not get very far. For their rash folly will become obvious to everyone, as was that of those magicians that were mentioned. Now you have closely observed and diligently followed my teachings, my conduct, my purpose in life, faith, patience, love, steadfastness my persecutions, my suffering, such as occurred to me in Antioch, but I, uh, Iconum and Lystra, uh, persecution I endured, but out of them all, God delivered me. Somebody say, God delivered me. Out of them all. And maybe you're not delivered now, but you will get delivered. Amen? You will get delivered before you leave here if you really want to be free. So, so, so the deal is, is that this is the time that we're living in. We're living in a time to where it's all about the individual. And not about God. It's not about the individual. It's about God. And it's about God's agenda. It's not about man's agenda. It's about God's agenda. So there are a few measures that you and I need to take daily. So that we can make sure that we are in a place to where we can avoid a lot of conflict. Alright. I wrote a list of things down here. And I'm going to give you this scripture. Alright. We have in our nation. And I'm going to sound like a politician when I say this. But I am a spiritual politician. We have in our nation, in our world right now, a serious economy problem. Well, maybe some of our economies are not high enough that you don't feel the effect. But there is a problem. There is a problem. There is a financial problem in our world, not just our nation, in our world. All right? If you're not, if you don't have knowledge of this, you just need, you, 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 can't, you can't have money and not have knowledge about the economy. I mean, so if we don't have any knowledge about the economy, how can you expect to get out of where you are? You think God going to give you $100,000 and you can't manage twenty? You think God going to elevate your, your pay increase to fifty grand a year and we have no understanding how money works? Come on. You got to learn how money works. You got to learn what the value of a dollar really is. I hadn't always known this, but thank God now I know it. And it changed my outlook and my perception on life. And I'm not just living for a four for four burger, a five for four Burger King menu now. I'm not just living for a three ninety nine McDonald's meal, because now we're thinking more than that. The only reason my kids like eating at McDonald's and the burgers are not good, they look for the toys. The toys is the catch, and it's cheap anyway. When we stopped getting the toys and got smart and started getting a small fry and a double cheeseburger and a, and a cup of water off the dollar menu, they began to lose their taste for McDonald's because they didn't get the toy with it. The toy was the catch. So now we change the image of the way you look at it. I'm saying more than what you hear right now. Maybe you'll hear it later. So there's a, there is an economy problem. And we are in perilous times. There's a problem with our physical safety. Last night, if you was at that festival, you would have been heartbroken. I, I pray you would have made it, but that festival in San Diego, they were just hanging out. They was hanging out. 
So there's a problem with families and people in our nation, in our world, are just casually going to a place like a festival. That's a problem. We're in perilous times. There are problems in our schools that we send our children to every day. We lost count of how many school shootings they've had over the last 10 years, the last five years. Because guess what? The schools are not safe any longer. The schools are being positioned and treated like concentration camps that you can't get in right now. When my kids were going to uh, Cabrillo in, in, uh, in Upland. Guess what? I love the school. It's because it was so secure. You couldn't get in there. If you weren't a part of that school, you couldn't get in there. They had the long, you couldn't even hop them fence. You couldn't even get in there. It was like a compound because they was concerned about the safety of the children. So we got a problem in our education system of being physically safe. Physically safe. They begin to put armed guards in some schools. They have the police force that are monitoring some schools because of the type of atmosphere that's been created over our nation. I'm still preaching the same message. And the end result is going to be great, but you got to get this. We have problems in our universities. They had a shooting at uh, Virginia Tech here not too long ago, well, a couple years ago. So our universities they had a shooting at a school here in Northern California at some university. So at our universities, there are problems. Problems on every hand. Come on. Come on. We can't be churchy anymore. We can't be churchy anymore. We got to address the issue, somebody. There are problems in our grocery stores. We shop at Walmart. They had a shooting somewhere in Nevada when these people had a shooting up in Walmart. Walmart. So you going to Walmart to buy some Frosted Flakes or something. Or some cinnamon rolls. And you feel like you got to carry your, your weapon up in there. It's because you don't feel safe in Walmart. You think Sam Walton would ever dream when he created Walmart that Walmart will be going through some of the changes it's going through now? Movie theaters. We go to movie, movie theaters uh, out of convenience. I remember after the shooting took place in Colorado, me and uh, Pastor Doug's son, Anthony, we went, I flew to Ontario, uh, uh, we went to watch a uh, Batman movie at, uh, at the cinema over here at Ontario Mills Mall, and I was like kind of scared. I was like, we need to get to a place to where we can see what's going on. They had cops in the, in the, in the movie theater. Because now we, we were in a place to where we don't even feel comfortable to go into a place to watch a movie. Are you still in church? Yes. You still here? Because we got conflict. And we need preachers to stand up and preach the truth. We got real issues. Instead of us focusing on trying to raise an offering, yeah, we need offering. But everything ain't about an offering. If you start offering yourself, we'll, need, we'll have all the offerings we need. We got problems in our parks. You don't even feel safe going to parks anymore because we got such a homeless problem everywhere to where you don't know what's happening. Man, we, we at the parks and you don't even feel safe at a city park because of the issues that has developed in our world. But we stuck inside the wall screaming Jesus instead of walking outside of the wall showing Jesus. We got problems in the workplace. I'll keep on. I like that. You make me, you encourage me. <laughs> we got problems. <laughs> we got problems in the workplace. The San Bernardino shooting that took place over it wasn't the first shooting. They had somebody with an axe in Oklahoma that tried to kill somebody on the job over there behind Islam some time ago. And I'm just naming a few. So we got problems in the workplace. We got problems in the workplace. So you go to work and you feel like you got to be strapped at work. You enlist in the military. And you feel like you will be safe in the military. All you got to do is begin to pull some of the news clips of the issues that has developed in our armed forces in America. And you don't feel safe in the military. 
You don't feel safe with the people that you're fighting with. And you don't feel safe with the government that's over you. I can't stand here and tell somebody, hey, go to the military. Not under this administration. We need you. But my God, you think I'm going to send my son out and all these people that's lying and saying what they would do. You think I'm going to promote my kid to go get involved with what's happening right now in this nation and you can't trust the government? So let's talk. These are some of the issues that we're faced. And guess what? The church is not solving problems. We're not solving problems. We got the power of the cross, but what about the strategy that comes with the power? How are we going to fix this? How are we going to change the city? How are we going to affect the community? Driving on the highway. I experience road fright all the time, not road rage fright. Because they have more uh, 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 these... Um, uh, NASCAR, Indianapolis Speedway, runaways, cop running things in California. It's like a like a like a run from the cop demon on the West Coast. We never dealt with that on the east in the east and the south. People decide to run from the cop and drive miles and miles and miles and run over people's cars. It's like it's some of a video game, man. You driving on the road. I remember one day there was there was a cop chase developing man. I started getting up. I started speeding. I was gonna exit. I was, let me get away from these people. You driving, trying to mind your own business. You're not safe on the road anymore. There is so much distress that's in the land. What are we gonna do? Some of us that we could, we'll stay here in the church, but that ain't what God told you to do. You're supposed to be here for a few hours, get what you need to get, and get out of here to go do what you need to do on that. So, 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 so if the service, if we push an overtime button in the service, like they do on some of these sporting events, you ought to be cool. <laughs> you know, because you don't do this every day. So we was in church long all day. You was only there one, one day? You, you, you was just in the one day? It's not like we have long services every day. We don't want to go to that church to service too long. Well, I'll tell you what. You sure love football. You can love Jesus the way you love sports. Now, I love sports, so I can say it. I'm, I'm not being insistent. I love sports. But I want to love Jesus just as much as I love more than I love everything else. So. Last thing I'll say, because I've spoke to you for almost an hour, not even an hour, almost. Peter took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sing. Jesus gave him the word, you can come. He said, Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come unto you. He started walking on the water. We look at the image of him walking on the water, but actually the water was upholding him because Peter was so connected to the creator. Yeah, he had faith that he walked on the water, but the water had to obey holding him up like it was holding Jesus up because it understood that he understood who he was in Christ. It's dominion. It's a dominion thing. He was connected. But all of a sudden, he took his eyes off the one that gave him the ability to walk on the water, and he started sinking because he allowed the distresses of the image that's around him to cause him to sink. We must eliminate distractions from our life. We must eliminate every distraction from your life. Proverbs 4, verse 25 through 27 says, Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Somebody say the safe path. God said if you keep, fo keep focused and keep your eyes on him, it's going to be safe. So they can, they can do all they want to do at the movie theater. They can do all they want to do on the highways. They can do all they want to do in the education sectors. But if my eyes on God, God said I'm going to be safe. He said don't get sidetracked. Remember I told you all about that cinnamon roll? Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. So you have a responsibility to keep your feet from falling what's not of God. See, when we, when we say evil, we think about like uh, the Wizards of Oz and, and uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Dorothy and, and the witch. 
But everything that's evil don't look like the witch. Everything that's evil don't look like Argamel and Israel. It don't look like that. There are things that are evil that don't look evil. But only through the discernment of the Spirit that you'll know that it's evil. John 16, 33, Jesus said, I told y'all. <laughs> I'm speaking like Barack Obama. I told y'all. God bless him. Help him, Lord. Help him make it. I have told these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence in the world. You're going to have hardships. You're going to have tribulations. You're going to have trials. You're going to have distresses. You're going to have frustration. Yes, it's in the Bible. You're going to get frustrated. To get frustrated is not evil. It's not evil. It's a human reflex. To get in a place of distress, the situation, the system is evil. But the response of you feeling frustrated is not per se as evil. It's just a place of frustration. You're trying to figure it out. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undoubted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived this of his power to harm you and to conquer it for you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap praise, y'all. In days ahead, things are going to become very, very interesting. Very interesting. Roland, can you come play? Just lay your hands on the keyboard. I know you're multitasking. But in days ahead, things are going to become more and more interesting than you and I have ever dreamed, ever. But the only thing that's going to keep you, that's going to keep me, is Jesus. Jesus said in his word, in me, you have peace. Every channel you turn on, even if you don't look at t TV, you pick up your smartphone, there's drama. There's drama. There's drama. Some of us don't even, we don't have to turn the TV on. Some of us don't have to pick up the phone. In your life, there's drama. In your home, there's drama. How do you and I escape the drama? I said this some time ago, and you may have heard it. But we have to get out of 911 mode with God. Only calling God with issues happen. You know, 911, God, I need you. No, every day should be a day of life that we need God and we let God know we need Him. I don't want to wait to call on God when I'm like in devastation and I need God to move for my family. I want to be able to have a relationship with God right now. So that when things do come, because things are coming, that's out of my control, that's out of your control, God will keep you in perfect peace. There are many people throughout the earth that are standing and they're pontiffing, they're standing, they're speaking the word, they're saying things, they're, 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 they're driven by humanitarian aid and they're driven by, you know, just all this other stuff, but they're not really driven by the... Uh, 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 the mindset of helping people to unravel the way we've been so that we can be erected and be the way God intended. Today has been a day of unraveling. Because sometimes we're, we're wired so tight. And when the Spirit of God starts hitting us with all these words, we start unraveling. Not unraveling like losing it, but unraveling because the way we've been built been wrong. And so the Spirit of God comes in strategically and he began to move layers and layers away. But as he moves away, as he takes away, he adds. God will never take things away from you without giving you something. He brings us out of darkness, which we were once consumed with, and he brings us into life everlasting and when we come into life everlasting life everlasting is shown and proven to be full of joy is shown and proven to be full of grace 
is shown and proven to be full of mercy. It's shown and proven to be filled with amazing insight about life. Because outside of Christ, we couldn't think the way we think. Outside of Christ, we couldn't see the way we see. Outside of Christ, we couldn't function the way we function. Not and bring glory to his name. At the end of the day, everything is about glory. It's not about your glory. It's not about my glory. It's about the glory that we can give to the creator. If we understood that we share in his glory by being connected to him, we wouldn't even care about trying to get our own glory. For the Bible says that we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Meaning that the glory that is released upon the Son from the Father is shined upon the people. And the people are seen as agents and children of God. And God is glorified because of our divine connection. That's what Paul meant when he said that you are ambassadors. You are my heavenly diplomats that live in the earth and you represent me. Every breath we take, every moment we live, it has to do with God being glorified. Don't allow your past perception concerning the way things used to be. To hinder you and stop you from embracing what's supposed to be now. God has a plan. He's not making plans. The plans are already made. It's our job. We're trying to see into his mind. So that we can extract from him or get from him. The thoughts that he have about me. About you. So today in Jesus' name, we release you into a place of peace and safety. We release you into a place of great courage. We release you into a place of supernatural divine demonstration of the love, the pleasure, and the counsel of the King that's speaking to you and I. We declare in Jesus' name that you would change your thinking. That you would trade in your old ways for his ways. I pray in Jesus' name that the Spirit of God shall overtake you and you shall be turned into another individual. The, the abilities that you share in now are abilities that God himself has given you. The things that come from you that you and I say glory to God, God has anointed you. God has chose you. God has called you. God has appointed you. So God is responsible for you. Paul told the church at Corinth, he said, don't fear those that can destroy the body. He said, fear the one that can destroy the soul and the body and put both into Gehenna. Today, Lord, we change our spiritual goggles. We change our tongue, and we shall speak the language of the kingdom. We shall speak what heaven say. We shall be in harmony with what heaven say. Help us to be what you call us to be in the earth, Lord. We cannot do it without you. We cannot be what you design without you, God. Help us to be antidotes to a world that's dying. Help us to be problem solvers to systems that are so dysfunctional in our communities, in our nation, in the nation of the world, God. Help us to be problem solvers, God. Help us to be peacemakers. Help us to be in a place to where we help a situation and not hurt it. Break us free from the shackles of yesterday. And bring us into the freedoms of now. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's stand. Let's stand. May the Lord bless you.